Okay, welcome back to Live, Life, Grow. I am Laura, and I am excited to continue our 2017-2018 curriculum discussion about my daughter's third grade curriculum. So, are you ready? Because I know all homeschool parents are interested in what other people are doing, and new homeschoolers are interested in what other homeschoolers are doing. So, let's jump right in and dive into third grade eclectic curriculum. La, 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 la. Let's start off with grammar, the curriculum that did not work for us. <laughs> I stuck it out all year long, but we are definitely moving to something else for fourth grade. This curriculum was boring. I mean, I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, maybe that was too much, but yeah. So we did first language lessons from the well-trained mind. So much of my curriculum, even though we are eclectic homeschoolers, is inspired by The Well-Trained Mind. However, we did not love these books. <laughs> we loved so many other books, but I guess one had to be a failure. So what we did not like about this was it was so scripted, it was so repetitive, that it was so boring. My daughter loved memorizing the poems in here, but everything else, it just was so repetitive and it has the uh, teacher guide the student and the parent guide the parent you cannot use the student guide without the parent guide the student guide is only worksheets and the parent guide essentially walks through and describes everything it tells you verbatim what you need to say word for word walking you through it and it can get extremely tedious so um, no we will not be using it would I recommend it for other students or other homeschoolers? If your child um, likes repetition, if your child likes to, you know, da, 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 and then this, or if you need the structure of something that's outlined for you and the repetitiveness, it may be good for you guys. It just did not work out for us. I would not um, recommend it just for the boringness of it. If you, this is something you are considering, definitely I recommend go uh, to a bookstore, um, find somebody who has one and take a look at it because um, this is not exactly what I thought it was. And I did preview it, um, to be honest with you. I did preview it. It just, um, after working with my daughter with it, I realized it wasn't gonna work for us. So that was our grammar, the first language lessons from the well-trained mind. Okay, so to mention, for my daughter's third grade curriculum, she completed for the 2017-2018 school year. She did grammar, she did spelling, she did reading on her own. Um, she participated in some of the read alouds with my pre-kindergartner. She did math, she did history, she did arts and crafts. Um, we were part of a homeschool group and um, she did coding and she did typing. So um, some of those things she did not do all of year like coding and typing were split years, but she did complete all of those um, throughout the year. So let's dive into those. Okay, so for spelling, we use spelling workout. Can you see it? So spelling workout, it does have a student guide, a student guide and a um, teacher's guide. I would say that you probably cannot get away without getting the teacher's guide. I bought these as a bundle. Um, they were relatively inexpensive. I've read a lot about All About Spelling, but this uh, was just something that I chose to go with. It, I personally um, liked it. I liked the layout of it. Um, however, my daughter did not like it, so it is something we will not be using again next year. But I do want you guys to know that um, Ha it might have been my fault that she did not enjoy it. Uh, I had it set up where she would do take a pretest on Mondays, and then there's a nice little story at the begin of, beginning of every lesson that goes through and uses the, the, the new spelling words for the week. And then she essentially had to do every activity that was related to spelling on Wednesdays, which sometimes could be four or five activities. And some of them were fun, like crossword puzzles and determining syllables, but some of them like proofreading and um, 
spelling and writing were not fun for her. And sometimes she can be a little lazy. Shh, don't tell her I said that. But it got to be where she just truly dreaded doing it. And maybe had I spread it out over uh, the entire week, it may not have been so. But um, one way or the other, we will not be using this next year. However, it is something that I would recommend other parents consider. Um, the one drawback to it, it did mention spelling rules in the beginning, and it didn't really go into detail with the spelling rules. It just briefly mentions them, whereas in other, probably all about spelling and other things, it would actually go into detail about those spelling rules. So um, it has a lot of fun exercises. It has a dictionary in the back with the spelling words that are in each lesson. It has fun crossword activities. It has a lot of stuff to reinforce. And then every sixth lesson is a recap of the previous five lessons. So it really is um, good. I, I, I'm not sure where your children would fall um, on the vocabulary. My daughter actually did not struggle with these words until maybe the last two lessons when it got to contractions and some other things. I don't know if that's just because she reads a lot and a lot of these words came natural to her or maybe she had was a little more further along in spelling um, in her school. But um, this is level C and it, I, it did come very easily for her um, as a third grader. So another note about that. But it's not something I would just discount, but it is something that we're not doing again next year. Okay, so if you've watched the preschool, uh, curriculum, you'll know that once my son got to math, he was actually doing Math Mammoth. Um, it comes in a nice, or I printed it off, I download, I purchased it as a PDF document. I actually purchased grades one through seven just because it was cheaper or it worked out to be more economical um, to purchase all of the grades if we ended up liking them and using them. So, and essentially <laughs> grades one through seven were almost as in it, or as cost the same as what one Saxon book would have cost. So the investment there um, to me was not very high to purchase that and try it. And if we didn't like it, I could use the worksheets as practice or whatever. But um, like I said, it, it's a PDF file you print off. Um, I did I did create little binders for both of them where at the beginning of every week, I just print off their worksheets, or the beginning of every two weeks, I just print off a bunch of them. It does require that you print in color. Um, I guess you don't, it's not required, but if you do, it's better because some of the things are color um, coded in the, in the lesson. So we were, I was very happy with the Math Mammoth um, for my son and for my daughter. At the beginning of every lesson, there is exactly what you're gonna expect in the lesson, and usually there are one to two pages with additional resources, additional online resources, where you can, it has games or um, additional websites where to do learning. It has a lot of things if your child is struggling with certain lessons, additional things that you can go out and have them do to really help them along and help them master those skills in that lesson. So I, I was very excited I am happy with Math Mammoth, and we will be continu continuing along with that. Reading. My daughter was required to read for 45 minutes every day. She would go to her room, set a timer, and read for 45 minutes. Sometimes she would read for more because reading is her favorite thing to do. She actually does that even when she's not required. But I did not have a set list for her to read. Um, as a third grade reader, I gave her the option to read whatever she wanted to read. At some weeks, there were times at the library that I would pick out um, one to two books that I would like her to try to read, and um, it was hit or miss with some of those. Some of those I picked were a little bit above her reading level, and then some of them she actually really enjoyed. The one, the one rule that I did have was that she did not pick out comic books because she would blow through those, and um, it, it, it was not quite the same as reading um, other books. So that was my one rule. But other than that, she got to go to the library every Monday and pick out what she wanted to read for the week. And like I said, every day she would go in her room, set 45 minutes, and read. So that was what we did for reading. And a lot of the time she came and sat with us, and um, when I would read to my son, she would um, sit and listen and, and do the read-alouds as well. She 
participated with the read alouds for Peter Pan and um, The Wizard of Oz and uh, Dr. Doolittle. So all of those things, we she had a lot of reading. There was, like I said, there wasn't a set list. So that was something she definitely enjoyed and we will be continuing with the 45 minutes of reading every day um, this next year. Okay, coding and typing. I, miss, I mentioned that my daughter did coding and she did typing. She did coding at the first half of the year and she did typing towards the last half of the year. Coding was something my husband wanted her to do. It is something that a lot of kids, if they can develop the skills for coding, develop a lot of other skills that are beneficial. So I was definitely on board with that, but he found this website called code.org where you go out and you sign up as a teacher and then you can assign students. So he went out and signed both my son and daughter up. And she actually went through and completed um, the first set um, and got a little certificate at the end and she actually really enjoyed it. Um, it is a free website, code.org. You can go out, um, sign your kids up and have them try it. Um, there's no, no reason not to. It's free, go out and do it. She loved it. It's not something we'll be doing at the beginning of this year just because she's gonna be pursuing something else, but it is something that I highly recommend and that she really enjoyed. She enjoyed the opportunity to get out, look on the computer and do different things. Um, and then with typing, typing.com, we use typing.com, and I really wanted her to develop her skills with typing. <clears throat> so there are seven or eight lessons within a lesson, and um, she hasn't completed the whole um, course yet, but she is farther, pretty far along, further along, and we are continuing that this next year. Um, I, I do recommend it. That it is a free um, thing. However, you can do a paid subscription. The paid subscription will, will get you where there are no ads. Um, she does have ads around her work text when she's working. She goes along and there are ads around. It's not been anything inappropriate or anything she's clicked on or anything that's been bothersome to us, so we are sticking with the with the free program. And like I said, that's typing.com. So go check out code.org and typing.com. They're both free resources to get your children involved and you can see if they like it or not. So just like for my son, we did a homeschool group and uh, arts and crafts at our local library branches. We had a homeschool group that we went to for two to three hours. She was able to socialize. She was able to pick out her books. She was able to do arts and crafts and then participate in the lesson that was a lot of times related to what, what time of the year it was around whatever holidays. So that was something she really enjoyed. Um, we learned things that we otherwise probably would not have. We reviewed things that we had already learned. So it was really cool and something that we really enjoyed. Um, a lot of artwork that are is up on the walls came from um, our arts and crafts every week, once a week. We also, in addition to our homeschool group at the library, we did an arts and crafts. Uh, we would go and for an hour, we would sit with the librarian and sometimes we would be the only ones, but she would uh, do, sometimes read a book and then when we, we would do a, a arts and crafts lesson based on the book, so that was kind of cool. And they um, had a lot of fun with that. So that was a way for me not to have to do arts and crafts because I'm not really the crafty kind. <laughs> but um, so that was cool and fun for them. Okay, so for history, we did the story of the world volume one, which is the ancient times. I did purchase the hardback version and then the activity book that goes along with this. We loved it. The kids loved it. I loved it. Everybody loved it. We're gonna continue on. Um, I highly recommend it. We did, we read through the text, and typically we would, <clears throat> excuse me, we read the text on Mondays or one day a week and did comp reading comprehension questions. And then um, a second day of the week, we would, <clears throat> excuse me, a second day of the week, we would, um, I would get additional reading, some of the additional reading resources out of the activity book from the library. We would read, and then we would do map work. There's map work that I would, did cop, made copies of the maps, and each of my children got one. And then there's typically a coloring page. So we would do that a, sec, a second day of the week. And then on Fridays, when we had our fun activity days, we would do um, one or two, sometimes three of the activities that were recommended toward the end of this. The activities um, consisted of... Um, cooking, they consisted of making things, um, they consisted of um, painting things. It was really cool, here we have, this is actually from one of our history activities. This was uh, from China, this is some Chinese calligraphy here. It was pretty cool. Um, 
we uh, had a Celtic feast. We did all kinds of cool things. And so we love it and we'll definitely be continuing on to volume two. And it's something I would de definitely recommend for you if you have not found a history um, uh, curriculum that you love. Okay, so for science. Science is a little bit more complicated than everything else. Um, out of the well-trained mind, it recommends a few different options. I attempted at the beginning of the year to try to do six weeks in one, like a study, a human body study. Then we did animal science study. Then we did plant science study. Then we did astronomy. And then by that time, it was time to move to geology, which I do not care for. <laughs> so at that point, um, we moved kind of more into unit studies where I let the kids go to the library, decide what they were going to study for the week, get library books, look at YouTube videos, and then at the end of the week they had to write a little report, um, a paragraph or two, and draw a picture of what they had studied. So that worked out pretty cool. But um, we started out, we did the human body study out of the first, the DNK, first human body encyclopedia. Um, this is a pretty handy book. Um, it had a lot of cool things. The kids did uh, learn some things in here. It has activities you can do. It has lots of cool, fun facts. It has lots of colorful pictures. Um, so it is a book that I would recommend um, if you're looking for a human body uh, book. Uh, this is a very good one. So yeah, we enjoyed that. That was our first science study. And then we went into animal science. So second to history this or maybe it might even be equal to history the kids loved 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 this book this initially was a library book that i stumbled upon when i was trying to figure out what in the world we were going to do for animal science i found this book at the library i brought it home we loved it we checked it out like four times so <laughs> at that point i ended up purchasing the book from amazon but um, in here, it goes through all the animal classes. It has lots of cool things about unique animals. Um, and, and then it talks about what makes animals animals. Um, I, I mean, it can, it can be for your basic elementary. It can even probably be applicable for middle schoolers who are learning the different classes and, and different things like that. So we read through and were able to find um, YouTube videos related to some of the unique animals in here. And it was pretty super cool. Like the kids loved it. I loved it. It was fun. Um, this is something we'll probably use for many years to come. So this is a fun book, whether you check it out from the library or purchase it, um, you should definitely get it for your kids and y'all take a look and, and find some of the cool, unique facts and cool, cool, unique animals there are out there that you may not know about. So check it out. The Animal Book by Steve Jenkins. Okay, we did astronomy. Um, I tried a few other books from the library that were just did not work out. Um, they either went over my kids' heads or went over my head. It, it was just, some of them were just fails. So I stumbled across this book. I think I actually knew about it, but I was hesitant to purchase it. But after I couldn't, I couldn't have the, the awesome luck that I had with the animal science study, I broke down and I bought it. The Story of Astronomy in Space from Usborne. Um, this actually worked out great for both my uh, pre-kindergartner and third grader. They both uh, learned some things from it. There are, um, there are little activities in it, just like some of the other books. There are lots of fun facts. We learned about all the planets. Um, I kind of turned it into, we did one chapter a week. Um, and so, toward the end, I did skip some stuff toward the end where it got to be a little, a little too over their heads, but the majority of it was, was, was for them. We enjoyed it. As an astronomy book goes, I did like this one. So I would recommend definitely checking it out. All the Usborne books are great. So um, why would this one not be? So we liked it. Along with that book, I tried to get her to do It's Space and the Solar System. It was a little workbook that I picked up. Um, I don't remember if it was at the grocery store, to be honest, or Toys R Us. Um, but it, it was just, it was too old for her. And it didn't have a lot of the things in it that was she was learning so it just didn't work out for us but yeah 
So, um, let's see. We covered grammar, spelling, math, reading, coding, typing, history, science, arts, crafts, and a homeschool group. That was my daughter's third grade curriculum for 2017, 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed this and it was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it and it was helpful, make sure and like below. Subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you. Like I said, I have my preschoolers curriculum out there, so go check out check it out if you liked it. If you liked this one and are curious about our preschoolers, I'd love to have you check that one out. And I'd love to see you later. So y'all take care.